that was a song called Be Mine Tonight, and it's remarkable because it's the first record in ten years from an artist who used to be Britain's most successful singer, a pop idol who was once compared to Elvis Presley, who rose from being a tugboat hand on the Mersey ferries to a 60s superstar, sailing up the charts with a flotilla of hits like Halfway to Paradise and Once Upon a Dream. For the past ten years, he's been living on a farm in Wales, which is probably about as far from the frantic pop business as you can get. But now he's back, back on record, I'm pleased to say, back in Liverpool. Billy Fury, good afternoon, welcome to the programme. Hi, good afternoon. How are the sheep then? Uh, the sheep are thankfully very well. They've all been checked over only about um, six weeks ago. There's about 200 of them there. And apart from the sheep, what else you got? Um, I also breed uh, horses. I'm hoping to breed some nice show horses. Mm, when I say hoping, uh, if I do, I'll be very lucky. Whereabouts is your farm? It's in, up in Mid Wales, south to Mid Wales, uh, way up in the mountains. Uh, very, very pollution free, real, real clean farming land. It's pasture, and it's also very nice for, for wildlife and bird life to uh, find a good living off the land as well. Sounds perfect, far from the madding crowd. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So, what persuaded you to make a new record after all this time? Well, uh, an old um, business association of mine and a great friend has been ringing me up for the last six years, about once or twice a week, and uh, saying to me, uh, why don't you make a record, let me teach it for you, and I'll arrange everything for you, you just come along to the studio. And I've been trying to say no, and uh, eventually he went into the studio without me knowing and made the actual, the whole track and just left uh, left it without a vocal on there. Then he rang me up and said, I've got the track for you. Will you just please come in and put your vocal on? Well, it, 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 I thought it was extremely nice. So I went along down to uh, Polydor, went along to a studio there, uh, walked in, it took about an hour or two, and as he said, uh, it was quite easy to do. Good. Have you sung in the last ten years at all? I haven't sung uh, professionally. I, I do a little songwriting occasionally just for my own own kind of a hobby, if you like. Uh, the songs that I put on the shelf, I play a little guitar and just sing uh, one, or, one or two tunes. Nothing more than that. Would you like it to be a success? Would you like to be back in the charts again? It would be nice, but uh, I certainly wouldn't like any kind of the, the pressures which I used, used to go to. But they have assured me that uh, I don't have to go out and do uh, shows here. I don't have to travel the country doing shows and haul around, anything like that. And uh, that would be a nice, easy, aff easy affair. From, from talking to you, Billy, it would seem that, that things like this, you know, being interviewed and, and going around and, uh, and meeting people, is, is not what you would list as your number one favourite hobby. Well, uh, I, I do like meeting people, but probably... In, say, in a pub or a wine bar or a club or something, and being more relaxed, I guess when you get uh, questions uh, asked, I guess you feel a bit nervous. It's like an interview, and an I've always been shy. I think that's really the main reason. I think probably too shy to tell me back in a lot of ways throughout my life. But um, I'm still trying to break down the barriers of shyness, and I hope I'm getting better. Oh, I'm sure you are. I'm, 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 I expect a lot of people listening this afternoon at home will be very surprised because they probably think of you as oozing with confidence, you know, remembering you uh, as you were. They're probably quite surprised that you're so shy. Uh, yeah, I think so. And unfortunately, shyness is sometimes um, can sometimes be wrongly in interpreted and uh, people can think uh, you're either stuck up because you don't want to talk to anyone. Or they can think you're a real moody kind of a person. But th there's a lot of people that are shy, and people just get the wrong idea mm. of them all together. Mm. And looking back to the old days, did they put it down to moodiness with you then? With me, they did. They, put, they thought I was very, very moody, kind of going on stage or TV, and uh, not being really full, full of confidence, like some people were. I found it difficult to try and really relax and smile, so I was kind of looking... Mm very serious all the time and people thought I was very very moody which really fitted in with the time mm. and I suppose with the kind of songs I was doing which were the kind of dramatic 
Bala type things. It's surprising that somebody who who hates the limelight and is so shy really gets to being in that position in the first place. You'd think it was the last thing you want to do, get up on the stage and sing in front of a lot of people. Yeah, well, that's that's very true. But um, when I was a youngster, I suffered a hell of a lot of um, illness throughout my childhood. I missed a lot of schooling. And every time I, I went, went to school, say, after coming out of hospital, the kids had moved on and uh, I couldn't keep up with them. And consequently, I didn't learn as much as I should. And when, when I left school, I really uh, I wasn't advanced enough to, to cope with, uh, with life. And it was down to me doing kind of physical work and very, very heavy work. And when the rock and roll and everything came along, and people were very, very musical in Liverpool, even then, going back to the old country and western days. And when the um, the chance to, to go into the, the music business came along, it really was great for me to be able to do something else which wouldn't take so much energy by using up, uh, well, you know, using my body just physically, mm. 24 hours a day, say, on the tugboat, mm. and then 24 hours off. Looking back, it's incredible that you were Britain's most successful recording star with a dozen songs in the top ten. You never had a number one, did you? No, um, but I was always very pleased to not to have a number one, believe it or not, because I thought once you have a number one, maybe an, an awful lot is expected from you. I thought a number three, a number four, a number five was just fine if I was down there with, with all the guys. <laughs> Uh, I found that very nice, and, and also I, I thought I was very lucky to to get where I was getting as well. You never went to America, despite your great success over here. Was that a deliberate decision? Yes, they tried to get me to go to America, do the Ed Sullivan show and things like that. But uh, I also had uh, offers to go down to Australia, I think South Africa and other parts of, and parts of Europe. But I just really didn't want to go. I felt that uh, I was too, too much of a home, a home bee, and um, I knew that if I was in Britain, I was always close to home, and my parents were close. If I needed any help, if I needed any any advice from anyone, I thought if I was in America working, it would be a whole completely different scene. And if I was in Europe and and singing in English and um, which is language they wouldn't be able to understand. I thought the whole thing was a waste of time, really. Is it fear? Um, so slightly fear. I, um, I, I've probably gone through a lot of fear um, in the early parts of my um, career, uh, making it in Britain, and it, it, it could be there was a bit of fear involved. I didn't want to go through the whole thing again in America or somewhere else. But if it was a big success, would you be, after everything we've talked about this afternoon, tempted to do any more, you know, sort of touring and TV shows? Would you be happier now, do you think? I'd be happier because I, I don't, I wouldn't do all those kind of, kind of things, you know. I wouldn't put myself on the line to uh, any way or any chance of making myself ill again, you know. But... Uh, I mean, I'm so sure I do a few promotion things, but television makes me very nervous. Um, I don't know why. Just standing there and having a camera on you, I think, is uh, horrifying. And you don't do any more radio interviews? Not after this afternoon, eh? Well, you've been very nice and also very easygoing, and you've made me feel very relaxed. <laughs> Thank you for it. But it's been very nice to meet you. The best of luck with a new single, Be Mine, tonight. Thanks for you. I know you're going to have a cup of tea with your mum. Uh -huh. And then you're off because you've got a, a mare that's about to foal, haven't you? That's right, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Uh, put a, a certain stallion on one of the mares and hoping this time that it comes out looking really right. Great. Believe the very best of that. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, man. Bye. <laughs>